My name is Dave Ford and I'm going to show how easy it is to use Microsoft Excel to create teaching and learning objects. This series of screencasts will take us through the steps required to create a matching pairs type activity. Now, This first screencast is going to show what the end product look like, looks like and then the future screencasts will take you through the steps required to create this or something similar. So here when the learners come in they're matching the countries to the capitals so we've got a list of countries now it's worth noting here that I've put these in alphabetical order and that's very deliberate uh, because it, it saves any chances of students using any sort of logic to guess the answers. If I then look at the answers I've created a little drop down box with a list of capitals here again arranged in alphabetical order so there's no sort of logical connection between the order that these appear in relationship to the order that these appear. And what I've also done is I've added a few dummy answers. So I've got Oslo in there, for example, and Vienna, which don't actually appear. So I've made it a little bit more of a tricky activity by adding those extra elements. So let's have a go at filling some in, and I'll get some right and some wrong just to see the effect. So England will give London, and France will give Paris. Now to Germany, uh, rather than using the drop-down box, if I want to, I can just type in, and it will recognise the text as long as I've got it correct. Now for Rome, let's say I've put Rome up rather than Rome, it will now come up and tell me that it's uh, invalid, so I can retry, and I can get it right. Uh, Northern Ireland I'm not sure about, I'll leave that alone. Uh, I'm going to get this one wrong, and I'm going to get that one wrong, and that one wrong, and that one right. I can then enter my name and I can check my answers. And what it's done here is it's told me how many I've got correct. It's not told me which ones I've got correct, it's just told me that I've got 6 out of 10 correct. So I can go back to my quiz and then I can think, okay, I need to change some of these. Um, and obviously I'll just quickly get it right. So I'll just try that again. It should say 9 out of 10. Okay, return to quiz. I think that's the one that's wrong. Let's try that. Check my answers. And there it's told me that I've got them all, all correct. Now, the reason I've done it the way I have, you can have it so that you put the question in and the answer in and then it tells you immediately whether one's right or wrong. But it's very easy for students to just then guess because they can just keep toggling between the two views uh, to see what's happening. So by doing it on block, um, it just makes it a little bit more tricky. They've got to put a bit more thought in to get the right answers. You'll notice that I've done this in Excel, but I've hidden things like the grid lines and the um, the header and I'm sorry, the column and row headings, so it looks quite neat and tidy. If I uploaded this to uh, the internet, for example, a virtual learning environment, uh, when you opened it up, it would actually just look like an ordinary web page. You wouldn't know it was Microsoft Excel. So, in the following screencasts, I'll show you how to create an activity like this.